right, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top, beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gorgeous Tuesday, April 6, 2021. Would you look at the camera instead of that damn swirly all the time? Uh, anyway, uh, I get somewhat against my better advice. I'm going to go out a little bit on a limb here today, and we are going to uh, go over to The Guardian, and we're going to look at an article about everyone's favorite billionaire we love to hate. Well, I guess that would be Donald Trump. So uh, the number two favorite billionaire we love to hate, I think, is the controversial Bill Gates, the old philanthropist himself, Bill Gates. And uh, before I dive into this story about Bill Gates, I, I, I just need to clear the air, uh, j just so you guys understand, because apparently by some of the comments and emails I'm getting, I think some of you have confused Sam Mitchell who likes to think that he has an ounce of uh, discernment and critical thinking abilities left in his head. Apparently you have gotten me confused with, with some sort of conspiracy wacko that Bill Gates is, is the Antichrist or that Bill Gates, of course, the you know the number one uh, right-wing wacky conspiracy theory is that Bill Gates is trying to depopulate the planet, uh, particularly through vaccines. The, the, this absolutely unadulterated horseshit uh, right-wing. A uh, wacky conspiracy theory that Bill Gates is depopulating the planet through his vaccines. Uh, I have said how many times and how many places that there are more that Bill Gates is responsible for more people being on this planet today than any other human, uh, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, there would probably be 10 to 20 million fewer sub-Saharan Africans if it was not for Bill Gates. Uh, it, 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 if everybody uh, had a depopulation agenda as successful as Bill Gates, you would have to multiply the population of the planet uh, 8 billion times 10 million, okay? Uh, how many times have I said if Bill Gates can figure out a way to sterilize the human race through vaccines, through chemtrails, uh, through the Green New Deal, whatever Bill Gates can do to depopulate this planet by sterilizing every human being on the planet, Bill Gates would be my biggest hero on the planet. So uh, I know, I, I'm getting the feeling I've already run off a, uh, one of my listeners here after I ripped down her most recent comment about Bill Gates and I'm just going to announce this. Uh, any, any time you know, in an effort to, to keep the uh, collective IQ of this channel's comment page you know, at, at, at the level of, uh, I don't know, Sancho Panza, anybody coming on here in these comments, I, I'm just probably going to put Bill Gates along with uh, Dane Wigington and Doot in the automatic filter that, that if anybody comes in here leaving a comment on this channel about Bill Gates, it, it's not going to be published so I don't have to pull it down, okay? This is not 
uh, a, a sounding board for you Bill Gates uh, jackass conspiracy wackos to come on here and spout your ignorance about Bill Gates depopulating this planet through vaccines. Okay, and if I just ran anybody out of here, goodbye and good riddance. I got no time for your crap. But anyway, I need to remember what channel I am on, and uh, we're going to go over here to The Guardian and actually read, it's a long involved essay, I won't have time to read it all, but um, for those of you interested in some intelligent reporting about Bill Gates, we're going to find it amazingly on The Guardian, some intelligent reporting about Bill Gates on The Guardian. This is written by a fellow named Nick Estes. Who is Nick Estes? Uh, it would be nice if they would put bios uh, at the top instead of the bottom. Nick Estes is a citizen of the Lower Brule Sioux Tribe. He is an assistant professor in the American Studies Department at the University of New Mexico. In 2014, he co-founded the Red Nation, an indigenous resistance organization. He is the author of the book, Our History is the Future, Standing Rock versus the Dakota Access Pipeline and the Long Tradition of Indigenous Resistance. So this is what uh, Nick Estes, this is his reading of Bill Gates, at least Farmer Bill. <clears throat> Take it away, Nick. Bill Gates is the biggest private owner of farmland in the United States. Why? Hmm. Why would Bill Gates be the largest owner of farmland in the United States? <clears throat> Bill Gates has never been a farmer, so why did the Land Report dub him Farmer Bill this year? The third richest man on the planet does not have a green thumb, nor does he put in the back-breaking labor humble people do to grow our food and who get far less praise for it. That kind of hard work is not what made him rich. Gates' achievement, according to the report, is that he is now the largest private owner of farmland in the U.S., a 2018 purchase of 14,500 acres of prime eastern Washington farmland, which is traditional Yakima territory, for $17 million helped him get that title. In total, Bill Gates owns approximately 242,000 acres of farmland with assets totaling more than $690 million. To put that into perspective, that is nearly the size of Hong Kong and twice the acreage of the Lower Brule Sioux Tribe, where I'm an enrolled member. A white man owns more farmland than my entire native nation. And then, of course, they refer you to this other story. In a pandemic, billionaires are richer than ever. But we're not going to go there. We're going to get back uh, to this story. The United States is defined by the excesses of its ruling class, but why do a handful of people own so much land? Land is power, land is wealth, and more importantly, land is about race and class. And, 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 and guys, uh, j just because I am reading this. This does not mean I agree 100% with everything in an essay that I'm reading. Uh, race and class have a hell of a lot uh, less to do with uh, power and wealth 
in my white man view of it. But anyway, this is Nick's. So according to Nick, uh, land is about race and class. The relationship to land, who owns it and who works it and who cares for it, reflects obscene levels of inequality and legacies of colonialism and white supremacy in the United States and also the world. Wealth accumulation always goes hand in hand with exploitation and dispossession. In this country, enslaved black labor first built US, U.S. wealth atop stolen native land. The 1862 Homestead Act opened up 270 million acres of indigenous territory, which amounts to 10% of U.S. land for white settlement. Um, blah blah. Then he goes off and uh, on a side rant about Ted Turner, the billionaire media mogul Ted Turner, who uh, you know owns the biggest ranch uh, and the uh, the biggest bison herd uh, on the planet. Uh, all right, again, I'm not. I, I'm. I'm going to put the link on here. You can read this whole thing. I'm. I'm just touching on some of his most salient points. The gun and the whip may not accompany land acquisition this time around, but billionaire class assertions that they are philosopher kings and climate-conscious investors who know better than the original caretakers are little more than ruses for what amounts to a 21st century land grab with big payouts in a for-profit economy seeking green solutions. Yes. Our era is dominated by the ultra-rich, the climate crisis, and a burgeoning green capitalism. And I am going to break in here because I honestly don't know. Uh, frequently when I hear the, word, the words climate crisis in a statement like that, it's, I jump to the conclusion that it's coming from a climate change denier such as Book Hermit uh, using the term climate crisis uh, derisively. I honestly don't know. Uh, it's unclear whether Nick is a climate change denier or not. Uh, you, can, you can read that sentence and understand that the climate crisis is real, uh, but addressing the climate crisis with the Green New Deal uh, that is simply going to put more and more billions of dollars into these billionaire uh, Save the Planet investors such as Bill Gates, keep them at the top of the heap that is where it goes wrong, but I understand it takes a level of, uh, of discernment and critical thinking to parse all of this out. Uh, that I don't know why I should expect more than about one-tenth of one percent of the humans on the planet to understand that the climate crisis is real and the Green New Deal as a solution to it is unadulterated horseshit. But anyway, let me get back to Nick, whatever he's saying here. Uh, our era is dominated by the ultra-rich, the climate crisis, and a burgeoning green capitalism. And Bill Gates' new book, 
how to avoid a climate disaster positions himself as a thought leader in how to stop putting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and how to fund what he has called a quote global green revolution close quote to help poor farmers mitigate climate change what expertise in climate science or agriculture bill gates possesses is be beyond being filthy rich is anybody's guess uh, and then he uh, talks about Bill Gates trying to weasel out of uh, that you know he he breaks it down uh, Bill Gates uh, you know how he acquired all this uh, blah 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 moving ahead um, Arable land is not just profitable. There is a more cynical calculation. Investment firms are making the argument that farmlands will meet, quote, carbon neutral targets for sustainable investment portfolios while anticipating an increase of agricultural productivity and revenue. And while Bill Gates frets about eating cheeseburgers in his book, for the amount of greenhouse gases the meat industry produces largely for the consumption of rich countries, his own massive carbon footprint has little to do with his personal diet and is not forgivable by simply buying more land to sequester more carbon. The world's richest 1% emit double the carbon of the poorest 50%, a 2020 Oxfam study found. According to Forbes, the world's billionaires saw their wealth swell by $1.9 trillion last year, while more than 22 million U.S. workers lost their jobs. Like wealth, land ownership is becoming concentrated into fewer and fewer hands, resulting in a greater push for monocultures and more intensive industrial farming techniques to generate greater returns. One percent of the world's farms now control 70% of the world's farm lands, one report found. The biggest shift in recent years from small farms to big farms was in the United States. The principal danger of private farmland owners like Bill Gates is not their professed support of sustainable agriculture often found in philanthropic work. It is the monopolistic role they play in determining our food systems and land use patterns. Uh, anyway, I am not going to get into the myth of the noble savage, which he goes into next. You can decide for yourself uh, whether, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you can go on the link and read it yourself if you want to. I'm not going to get into this whole thing, our, our, is the color of your skin if your if your skin is red that means you are any more uh, of a savior of this planet than if your skin is white uh, I don't tread there but we're just going to jump now to the last paragraph uh, to sum up Nick Estes essay the average person has nothing 
in common with mega landowners like Bill Gates or Ted Turner. The land we all live on should not be the sole property of a few. The extensive tax avoidance by those titans of industry will always far exceed their supposed charitable donations to the public. The quote, billionaire knows best mentality detracts from the deep-seated realities of colonialism and white supremacy and it ignores those who actually know best how to use and live with the land. These billionaires have nothing to offer us in terms of saving the planet, unless it's our land back. Yes, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure the billionaires are going to give their land back to save the planet. But anyway, I want to thank, thank Nick Estes for uh, some somewhat intelligent reporting on Bill Gates and, and what his whole uh, slew is about. This whole bullshit uh, Green New Deal and Green Capitalism. Uh, it is to put more and more money into these billionaires' pockets while they greenwash us all and let the bill just leave it to the billionaires and we will take care of it. You little peons, you little people can just go back to sleep. But anyway, I need to get out there with a bucket, a five-gallon bucket of water on my own uh, land holdings here in the, uh, the Point Lonesome Swamp. It looks like my uh, azalea bushes are starting to wilt in the heat, and I need to get out there and save my wilting azaleas, if not the planet. I get out there and suggest you get out there and save your wilting azaleas while you still can. Bye, guys.